Okay, so this part we get to talk about the networks and the kinds of softwares that we have. So I'll try to be as brief as possible. So a network is basically two or more computers that are connected so that data and resources can be shared. So that's the main essence of forming a network. There is need to share data and resources. So two or more computers being connected is what a network is. So most computers are connected to some kind of network. Each computer has its own network address which uniquely identifies it among others. A file server is a network computer dedicated to storing programs and data that are shared among network users. So you may use um, the cell phone networking which will allow you to connect to, to the internet which is a form of a network as well because you have two or more computers connected so you get to share data and resources. So not only can we share data, you can share resources like uh, it may be, for example, if you go to a cafe, computers are connected together, you're able to share a printer, for example, that is also a resource that you can be shared. So that is also an example of uh, a network. And of course, we we'll talk about different kinds of network depending on the number of computers and the range of uh, computers covered. So network connections. Each computer in a network could be directly connected to each other computer in the network. These are called points-to-points -point connections. Of course, when you get to, to talk about topologies, you realize that this is what we call mesh topology. Okay, so now in this case, what we are saying is uh, adding a computer requires a new communication line for each computer already in the network. So this was a bit expensive. So this technique is not feasible for more than a few cross machines. Now imagine you having let's say 10 computers and then each computer is supposed to connect to the other using a different cable. That is very very expensive. Network connections. Most modern networks share a single communication line. Adding a new computer to the network is relatively easy. So this is better off when you think of uh, computers. Uh, if, for example go to a cafe where computers are connected in this. So this is a bit cheaper. This is cheaper actually as compared to a case where all the computers for example, what computer is connected to each each computer available? That is too expensive. So this is at least better off. And of course, um, if we had other computers being connected to the other side, this was going to be called a bus topology. But in this case, we are not talking about the topologies, but we'll take it as it is. So this is relatively easy. Network traffic must take must take turns using the line, which introduces delays. So for this computer to access what is coming from that computer, if it's a server. It has to wait for this one first of all to access it. So that is what where the delays are coming in. Often information is broken down in parts called packets, which are sent to the receiving machine then reassembled. Okay, so when you are sending uh, information, information is not sent as complete. It's broken down into parts which you call which are called packets, and then they are sent to receiving. And then as they reach that computer where they're going, they are going to be brought as one. So local area network, so I said we have different kinds of networks depending on the location and the number of computers, the distance of course and the number of computers. So a local area network covers uh, a small distance and a small number of computers. So within an organization for example we have what we call a local area network. Within UNSA, think of it, so we have a local area network which is able to connect different people, the so famous common known as uh, the EDROM. So Elan often connects the machines in a single room or building. So it kind of this this point kind of disqualifies Zidrom to be a local area, but it is due to the distance. But of course, as we get to look at things like since we have access points, that is one way of also coming up with a different kind of uh, yeah. But take the take note of this point: single room or building, basically local area network. So a wide area network. We cannot classify eDROM to be a wide area network. Of course, there are other kind of uh, networks that we've not covered. So a wide area network connects two or more LANs over long distances. So two or more local area networks connected together over long distance forms what we call a wide area network. So for example, you're connecting the LAN within UNSA and other universities. When you get to connect, when there is a need of connection between the two or more, together we form a wide area network. A LAN is usually owned by one organization, so that's why we, we can qualify. 
since we have it within UNSA, but a uh, one often connects different groups in different countries. So software categories. So we can classify software depending on the use, the function, and also on the permission that we have in terms of using it. Is it payable or is it free? So we can classify in those categories. So to start with, we can try them depending on the functions, which is operating system and the application program. So what is an operating system? So examples of operating systems, of course, we have Windows, Linux, Macintosh. So this will help us to understand more. So they control all the machine's activities, provide the user interface to the computer, manages resources such as the CPU and memory. So the operating system is basically what controls all the machine activities. It allows the user to be able to interact with the computer. It manages the resources of the CPU and also memory. It's the one that allocates storage space to the application programs. For example, Microsoft uh, Word. For example, you are installing a game on a computer. Those are application programs. Okay. So now those ones do not know how to interact with hardware. So it's the operating system that allows them to do so. So it's a, it's a duty of operating system to manage the resources and provide an interface, a way for you as a user to interact with uh, the computer. So for example, if you compare Linux, if you've worked with Linux, you realize that it requires a bit of some commands for you to interact. It's the same computer. You may install it Linux, but the way you're going to be interacting with uh, the computer is going to be different. So that's why we are saying it is the duty of the operating system to provide a user interface. Now, application programs, basically, these are softwares that are designed for a specific purpose. Okay, so for example, a game is an example of an application program. So a generic term for any other kind of software. Word processors, MISA control systems, games, all these examples of application programs because they are made for a specific task. Operating systems, these are the ones that are in charge of controlling the, providing a way of the other applications uh, to work from so most operating systems and application programs have got a graphical user interface so when you talk about the user interface graphical user interface is a common nowadays because it allows us to use the, uh, the images on a computer to click for example you have folders you're able to see the icons that's graphical user interface now there's also what you call the command line interface which requires you to use commands and of course some operating systems like Linux work more better with uh, the command line interface and of course even within windows if you get to use your command line uh, your command prompt you'll be able to use the command line interface to communicate with your computer so application software includes programs that do real work for the user so the actual work that is done by the user is performed by the application software but in the background there is the operating system that you can't see you just know okay on this computer what is running is windows so it's one that ensures security, provides the interface, allows the application software to be installed. And it's the operating system basically that, um, for example, if you want to install a different kind, the same software, let's say you want to install, what can you think of? Let's say a game. You realize that if you're downloading a game, there'll be options to say this is for Mac OS, this is for Linux, and then this is for Windows. So that tells you to say, even the kinds of uh, programs that you install on these uh, operating systems, they are dependent on them. Open source software. So again, categorize software in depending on how we are able to use it. So open source software, a very good example before I even move further, I can give you an example of Moodle. Moodle is an open source software. So an open source software is a computer software whose source code is available under a license that permits users to use, change, and improve the software and to redistribute it in modified or unmodified form. It is often developed in a public collaborative manner, well known as well known open source software products are Linux, Netscape, and others. So the basic idea is if open source from what you're able to see is available. The source code is available under a license that permits users to use change. So this is like a free software that is can you can use. You can change it, you can improve it, 
and even distribute it with so the permission is available in short so Moodle can be used and it is used by a lot of universities for that very fact people are able to improve it able to, to to change things about it yeah so that's what an open source software is now proprietary software on the other hand is a non-free software with restrictions on using copying modifying as enforced by the proprietor so restrictions on use modification and copying is achieved by either legal or technical means and sometimes both so examples is microsoft so we have microsoft 365 you cannot use it for free you have to buy it okay so we also have what we call system software so system software operating system is a software which makes a computer to accept work it is a software that enables all the programs we use the operating system organizes and controls the hardware the operating system acts as, a, as an interface we've already talked about this word processors on the other hand are examples of application software so system software we have an operating system as an example word processors are examples of our application software used for a specific task so uh, word processing is a tool that helps users creating editing and printing documents word processors normally have uh, the following capabilities they should be spell checking checking if uh, the spellings are okay there are standard layouts for normal documents these things are about allowing to come out bold uh, italics and underlining center lines so okay these are the basic uh, i'm sure if you've worked with word if you've typed before at one point you understand what all these functions are so other examples of application software includes our spreadsheet services you common known as our excel our graphic representations so we can work with uh, powerpoint as an example of uh, microsoft powerpoint is an example of uh, such uh, an application software so they are able to show slide shows for you that when you're working with a projector it makes works better repeating computer presentations on a computer monitor using sound animations in slide shows the internet the internet is a wide area network which spans the entire planet the word internet comes from the term internet working which implies communication among networks so inter inter networking so when you are trying to communicate among networks it's called internet working that's where the word internet came from so it started as a united states government project sponsored by the Ad advanced research projects agents and was originally called the upper the internet grew quickly through the 1980s and the 1990s less than 600 computers were connected to the internet in 1983 and now there are over 10 million if not billions of computers connected to the internet 24 7. so we have uh, what we call a protocol so a protocol is a set of rules that determine how things communicate with each other so for that for us to have communication for devices to communicate there is need of uh, a protocol a set of rules that will determine how we are going to connect and understand each other so the software which manages the internet communication follows a suit of protocols called the tcp or the ip so the ip stands for the internet protocol the tcp stands for transmission control protocol so the internet protocol determines the format of information as it is transferred so in what format is the information going to be transferred if it's moving from yet yeah, moving among the networks let's say within unza how how is it move? if you're trying to send uh, an image to your friend uh let's say i'm by vet i'm sending an image to to, to somebody by ruins uh, right so what basically is going to happen is uh, you are going to see the image on your end but there is an internet protocol which is determining the format on which it is going to be transferred and then the transmission control protocol tcp indicates how messages are reassembled and handles lost information okay so we talked about transmission where you have uh, the information being sent in 
in packs called packets. So it is a duty now at the end of the transmission for the TCP to now reassemble them and it handles any lost information. So the IP and the internet addresses. So each computer on the internet has a unique IP address such as that. That's why if you've heard of things like in Concondito mod, the VPN. So the VPN, what they just try to do is they try to give you a unique IP address that is not the actual one. Because with the IP address, I'm able to track your location. And I'm able to track the device that is doing this, doing this and that. And usually, if there was, there was a time when the internet was basically shut down, I think in, in Zambia at one point. Yeah, these are... Uh, social platforms were off so all they just had to do was just try to because the ip address on your computer on your phone basically kindly identifies you to be in zambia so if you use a vpn it will kind of change the ip address for you to give you a unique one yeah but using incognito mode will still you still be tracked by the network providers they'll be able to know your location and you'll be able to know it's you is using the internet most computers also have a unique internet name, which is also referred to as the internet address. So the first part indicates a particular computer, and then the rest is the domain name indicating the organization, for example, .unza. Domain names. So this is the tab now you need to know domain names. So the last section of each domain name usually indicates the type of organization. Is it an education institution? A commercial institution, the common one, commercial. So, if you didn't know what it stands for, you said .com. It means commercial business. When you say edu, it's education. Of course, we have got some commercial educational institutions as well. So it may be non-profit organization, which usually ends with ORG, and then net. That is net-based organization. But people usually even just use them anyhow. They don't understand what they mean. So sometimes you, the suffix may indicate the country, .zm, .uk, .au, yeah. So a domain name can have several parts. Unique domain names mean the multiple sites can have individual computers with the same local name. When used, an internet address is translated to an IP address by a software called the DNS, which is a domain name system. There is no one there is no one-to-one -one correspondence between the sections of an IP address and the sections of uh, an internet address. Now, the wide wide web allows many different types of information to be accessed using a common interface. A browser is a program which accesses and presents information. It may text, graphics, sound, audio, video, executable programs. Go to transcended www.transcended.institute. <laughs> institute.com that is going to be an example of uh, a website so what you're using if you're using google or chrome that is a browser we're talking about and then a web document usually contains links to other web documents creating a hypermedia environment the term web comes from the fact that the information is not organized in a linear form instead it is a web you know what a web is right the wide wide web web documents are often defined using the hypertext markup language which is html and then information on the web is found using a uniform resource locator which is usually the url they'll ask you to type the url of the website that you want to access so this is an example of url uniform resource locator allows you to uniquely identify a website all right so now in the next part of uh Introduction to computers and high CT. We are going to talk about computer security, viruses, protection, and everything else. That's what we're going to talk about. So don't miss out on that one. Thank you very much for watching. If you wish to sponsor the other chapters that are remaining, basically get the information in the description, get in touch with us, and then you can sponsor. And if you just wish to support or donate, just use the link in the description. Any amount is acceptable if you like what we are doing.